Hello, my name is Bethany Beebe, and today I'm going to be talking about something that is very important to me because it was something that I had to really think about when I started into the world of historical study. And that is finding a job after you have your degree. Um, I'll be honest, I was terrified. I thought I was choosing another degree that was not going to be very job friendly. Um, I thought it was going to be very difficult, and then I thought the only positions that I would be able to have would be in academia, whether it be a high school teacher, whether it be a professor at a college, assistant professor, I, I just didn't know, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to move into that field. So my jobs before I decided to step foot into the historical studies were basically consistent of working at a studio as a production assistant, um, working for a church as the Sunday school teacher, maintenance crew, you name it, I did it. Um, also, I worked in the props and sets department. I had so many jobs as cashiers, uh, uh, working in convenience stores, but none of those jobs had anything really to do with history. So what was I to do? I told my friends that I was uh, going to go and uh, work towards my degree in history and half of them were like, brilliant. You're going to have a golden ticket to get you any teaching job you want. The other half was seriously, what are you gonna do with that once you graduate? So I had both of those going, but then I was like, do I even wanna be a teacher? because I don't even like talking in front of people. I get um, stuttery, I uh, run my words together, I slur, um, I talk too fast sometimes. I'm not a very good public speaker. Uh, so do I really wanna be a teacher? Maybe I don't, I don't know. So the idea of going into another job or ha um, getting another degree in something that would be uh, useless after I graduated was terrifying. But thankfully, I had professors who understood this fear and they had classes dedicated to figuring out what to do with your history degree outside of academia. It was brilliant. And I thank them for that because my eyes are open to understanding that just because you have a degree in history does not mean you're only going to teach it for the rest of your life. There are job opportunities out there that I have discovered that I didn't even know existed. For instance, there are many job opportunities through the military for documenting, archiving, and studying the military uh, fields. As in, uh, they have specific historians they want in the Air Force. They have uh, historians that they want to hire in the Navy. They want historians in each branch of the military to study that field of military and to document their history over the years. Um, you can be, become a researcher for companies. There are a lot of companies that are hiring historians just to research data. That is something you can also do. But the career I want to talk to you about today is working in the field that I am currently working in, and that is as a librarian. Mostly because I had no idea how much history knowledge I was going to need stepping into this job. I had found that as a librarian, I field so many questions about local and public history. Everybody comes to the library because they think we have the answers to everything. And with all the books around, I'm sure we certainly could lead them in the correct direction. But they also think we know everything about the historical sites around the area. I have to do a lot of research because I'm new to this area. So I have to do a lot of research into this town and what the history of this town is, what it has to offer. Um, I also get a lot of questions on genealogy. So there's a lot of research that goes into that. Thankfully though, our Department of Libraries has a page on their website that where you can link into different aspects of Vermont genealogy. Now, if you wanna go into out-of-state genealogy, you have to go to out-of-state libraries and get permission uh, to use their pages. Otherwise, uh, the Vermont um, genealogy is a fantastic source to find out where you come from. Now, my genealogy comes from everywhere, so it's kind of more difficult, but I'm able to help 
research people's genealogies when they have questions. We also have um, the town reports dating back to the early 1900s. One was even in the uh, late 1800s. So we have a lot of archive documentation that we can help people if they're looking for genealogy, if they're looking to study the history of the town, or if they just want information about what was going on at the town during a certain time period that they can use for, um, say, a building structure. Now, as an example, next door to us, there used to be um, what used to be the Town Historical Society. It is no longer there. It has been demolished. But we have documentation to know where the town borders are so that we are no longer arguing or debating um, with our neighbor between um, our neighbor beside us where our property lines are because we know that there was a, a town building there so their property only reaches so far and we have documents showing where the uh, historical society used to be and we have all that archive so that we know where things are. We also know where we should do some digging for plumbing or other um, septic tanks, uh, situations like that. We have these documents in our library in our archive section that I can go to to help people who may need it. Uh, we also have uh, special collections. We have a literary special collections and those need to be taken care of properly. Um, I also have to go through to make sure that when people donate books, for say that collection that these are true um, literary collections and what I mean that they need to be within a certain date they need to be published by a certain time or they need to be first editions um, otherwise they don't necessarily fit into our uh, literary collection I also have the Vermont collection where people can bring in books now these books are about the history history of Vermont um, not necessarily about authors who live in Vermont who wrote books because there's a lot of those um, but the Vermont history collection has a lot of books about our history uh, they keep updating so I have to make sure that I get the newest books I have to make sure these books are historic historically accurate and not just somebody's opinion so there's a lot of research that goes into that as well um, now I had because I wanted to do this uh, to let people know that a librarian has um, a lot of historical needs in the library. Um, and I wanted people, other librarians, to mention what they thought about being a historian or uh, working as a librarian as a historian. And I reached out and about six other libraries said it was a fantastic idea and that it should be, and that they wish they had more historical experience because of all the information that they are asked, especially at the reference section. Uh, one director of libraries, um, director, I'm sorry, he's a library and director. He actually has a degree in archeology span and a degree in early American history, which has been so needed for his position as a librarian. Um, one librarian, her name is Joy Warland and she is the, state library consultant and part of the continuing education in small for small and rural libraries and uh, she said that a local historian on site is invaluable for reference questions in local history local landmarks and gene genealogy now you may have experienced this when when your library is open and she was emailing me about this because we had to have our libraries closed but she said um, someone from out of town comes in and knows their ancestors lived in the area and wonders where the graveyards are, how to access, um, how to access the historical records or town records is a huge help for their library. So having a historian or being um, in the historical field and working as a librarian is so important. It is such a huge help for the people and the patrons who come in here. Um, another library said that the town of Chester Library has a small collection of genealogies and fields of a surprising number of geneal geneal genealogical questions. And she would love to have somebody to work at her library as a historian to help with that. And she sees that as a librarian, that is one of her faults. Now, as a historian coming into the librarian field, we are already one step ahead because we know how to do research, we know how to work with collections, and we know how to archive. Um, 
there is one minor issue and that is to be a librarian you need to have a librarian certificate or a degree thankfully you can get the certificate for free they have classes online they have classes when the um, town or the Vermont State Library opens they have classes there a lot of them are done through webinars and like I said it's a free program you can get your certificate for free I am currently doing this uh, and they offer also offer to pay you for the classes and for the webinars uh, that you do outside of your library work so it's really amazing I think being a librarian uh, is a perfect fit for a historian and not many people would have thought about that so there are jobs out there besides teaching and I am thankful that I fell into this one and I hope that this helped you to understand there are jobs out there that you never would have associated with being a historian but the fit is perfect thank you very much and have a good day.